One of nature's grandest spectacles is coming up on April 8th, 2024. We're talking about a total solar eclipse. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to get ready for it. This time around, the eclipse will be visible from a slice of North America stretching from Mexico across the central and eastern part of the United States and into eastern Canada. We'll get into all those details and we'll talk about where the best places are to see the eclipse in just a moment, but first, a really quick Eclipse 101 refresher. A total solar eclipse happens when the Moon passes exactly between the Earth and the Sun, and during a total solar eclipse, the Moon covers the Sun up completely for a few minutes, and it's one of the most spectacular sights you're ever going to see. Light from the Sun hits the Moon, casting a long shadow. Now, this diagram isn't to scale, the distances are all compressed. Normally, the Moon's shadow misses the Earth altogether. But roughly once every 18 months, the dark part of the Moon's shadow, called the umbra, hits our planet. But with the Earth rotating, and with both the Earth and the Moon moving in their orbits, the Moon's shadow doesn't stay put. Instead, it sweeps out a long, narrow path known as the Path of Totality. Now, like I said, we get a total eclipse visible from somewhere on the Earth's surface roughly every year and a half, but that somewhere might turn out to be the other side of the world. That's why the 2024 eclipse is especially exciting for people living in North America. Like the eclipse in August of 2017, the path of totality comes really close to home. Or, if you're really lucky, maybe your home is actually in the path of totality. Now, you might remember that during the 2017 eclipse, the path of totality stretched across the continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic. That was really cool. But in some ways, the 2024 eclipse will be even better. For starters, it will be almost two minutes longer. So for a lot of observers, you'll actually get to see more than four minutes of totality compared to a maximum of just two and a half minutes in 2017. As well, more people are likely to see the 2024 eclipse. This time, nearly 32 million people live within the path, which will run from southwest to northeast, encompassing cities like Dallas, Little Rock, Indianapolis, Cleveland, and Buffalo. And you've also got some major urban centers just at the edge of the path, cities like San Antonio, Austin, Cincinnati, and the Canadian city of Montreal. So the 2024 eclipse might be one of the most watched celestial events in history. Now, if you live outside the path of totality, you'll see a partial eclipse. But the difference between partial and total is literally the difference between day and night. That's because the sun is so bright that even if a tiny bit of the sun is visible, it still lights up the whole landscape, which means your number one objective for next April the 8th is to get into the path of totality. And in fact, you want to get as close as you can to the center line, the path that runs through the middle of the path of totality. If you're at the edge of the path, you see a much shorter duration of the eclipse. To see the maximum length of the eclipse, you want to be on the center line. Let's just look at Texas as an example. You've got some major urban centers that are just on the edge of the path of totality, like San Antonio and Austin and Fort Worth. If you're in the central part of Dallas, you get three minutes of totality. And if you can get further south into the southern suburbs of Dallas, you get that much more of totality. And finally, as you can see, if you can get down a bit below Waxahachie, that area, close to the center line, now you're getting over four minutes of totality. And that's really what you want. And similarly, if you're down in San Antonio or Austin, you just get a few brief moments of totality. You want to go a bit further north or a bit further west, as close as you can get to the center line, where you can actually get more than 4 minutes and 20 seconds in the moon's shadow. Now, there are a lot of great resources on the web to help you get ready, and you might find these websites to be really, really useful. You'll find things like the exact start and end times for the eclipse for various cities along the path, and also detailed state-by-state -state maps of the eclipse path. Now, here's my number one tip. Don't wait until the last minute to book your accommodations. Already, hotels and Airbnbs in sort of the prime locations within the path of totality are getting booked up. Uh, we saw a lot of this in 2017. There was even, unfortunately, prep price gouging, kind of inevitable, unfortunately. So don't wait until the last minute. Now, I guess the good news is that even if you end up staying just 
at the edge or outside the path of totality, hopefully you can drive, it won't be such a long drive, you can drive into the path of totality, say, on the morning of the eclipse. But if you're able to get into the path of totality early, do it. And similarly, if you're able to stay overnight after the eclipse, if you're able to stay that one additional night following the eclipse, do it. The worst traffic always seems to be right after totality. So if you can wait and do the drive home the next day, even better. Now, the day of the eclipse, April 8th, will be a Monday. If you're able to make a long weekend out of it, obviously that's the way to go. For sure, not everyone is going to be able to do that. Okay, but if you are able to pull it off, definitely the way to go. And try to be as self-sufficient as you can. Have water, extra water, food, keep the gas tank filled up. Um, maybe even bring a sleeping blanket just in case. Now let's talk about the weather. While 2017's eclipse happened in late summer, the 2024 eclipse is happening in early spring, which means, unfortunately, there's a strong possibility of clouds. Now, sorry, I know there's a lot of clutter in this diagram, but roughly put, what it's showing is that the weather prospects are best in Mexico, where there's, in fact, better than even odds of clear skies, and things just get progressively more iffy as you head along the path towards Canada. So for folks who want to stay within the United States, the best bet is definitely Texas, and the closer you can get to the Mexican border, the better. In the southwestern part of Texas, the odds of having clear skies are just about 50-50. And then, as I say, things just kind of get steadily worse as you head northeast. And a word about safety. During the partial phases of the eclipse, when any part of the sun is visible, the only safe way to look at it is using approved eclipse glasses like this. If you're not sure who the reliable manufacturers are, you're not sure where to get them, um, you can go online certainly, but check the website of the American Astronomical Society. They have a list of dependable manufacturers. And also, you might want to try your luck at your local science center or planetarium. It's possible that they'll have these for sale there. And by the way, if you put these on and it's, you know, you're inside or you're looking up at your kitchen light or something like that and you're thinking, gosh, that's funny, I can't see anything. That's the whole point. They're really, really dark. They block out 99.9 .9 something percent of the light that hits them and they're specifically for looking at the sun. The nice thing about the partial phase of the eclipse is that it unfolds at rather a leisurely pace. It will take a bit more than an hour for the moon to slide in front of the sun. Still, that time will go by pretty fast, especially as you get closer and closer to totality. And remember to look around you, to look at the scene unfolding. A few minutes before totality, look for subtle changes in the landscape as colors become more muted because of the reduced amount of light and shadows get sharper. If you're wondering why the sky looks kind of hazy and orange in these photos from 2017 that I took in Oregon, it's because I was a lot closer to the forest fires than I'd expected. Luckily, there shouldn't be too many forest fires in April. Just moments before totality, and assuming you have a clear sky, you have a chance to see the so-called diamond ring, that spectacular effect when just the very last bit of sunlight is visible behind the moon. And then totality suddenly it will be as dark as night, or at least as dark as deep twilight. And you'll see something that you can only see during a total eclipse, the sun's wispy outer atmosphere called the corona. And here's the good news. During totality, during those few minutes when the sun is completely covered up by the moon, it's safe to look at. You don't need the eclipse glasses. You can even use binoculars. But remember, the moment totality ends, the moment the first little bit of the sun comes out from behind the moon, put those binoculars away, don't look at it with the unaided eye, and grab the eclipse viewers because you're going to need them again. Okay, let's talk about eclipse photography. Now, the advice you'll hear again and again from people who have been to multiple eclipses is really live in the moment. This is not something you need to take your own photographs of. Sit back, soak it in, enjoy the actual experience of being in the moon's shadow. The last thing you want to be doing is fussing with your cameras like I was doing in 2017. Don't be that guy. You don't want to be poking with your camera equipment. You want to be looking up and experiencing this few times in a lifetime spectacle. But 
I get it, the urge to take photos can be overwhelming. So if you do decide to do some photography, uh, you will get some good mileage out of your smartphone. Um, what you won't be able to do is get good close-up photos of the eclipse with it. But you could put your smartphone in video mode. I think that actually might be the best way to go. Set it up a little bit ahead of time, put it off to the side, uh, just to have it shooting video of you and your group, and then you don't have to think about it. So it'll be recording while you're enjoying the eclipse. If you want to get you know, you and the eclipse in the same field of view, could be a little bit tricky. The sun will be quite high in the sky, I think more than 60 degrees, depending on your location. So 90 degrees would be straight up. So you might have to tilt your camera into portrait rather than landscape orientation and, you know, rest it against a wall or, or something off to the side. And maybe you can get yourself and the eclipse, possibly. But at the very least, the video that you'll get will show the sky getting darker and it'll capture people's reactions. So it might be really neat to have just, just for that. You can also try the wide-angle approach with your DSLR and a wide-angle lens and a good tripod. Though, as I mentioned, the sun will be very high in the sky, which will make it a bit challenging. I've been pretty lucky over the years at previous solar eclipses, and I've managed to get some reasonably good shots that capture the landscape down below and the solar eclipse up above. But I'll add the usual caveat. Be careful about trying to do too much during those precious few minutes of totality. Now, if you really do want your own close-up photographs of the eclipse, you'll want a good DSLR with a pretty significant uh, telephoto lens. Uh, this one is actually only 70 to 200 millimeters, not quite up to the task. What I really recommend is something 300 millimeters or longer, and that's simply because the, the sun is actually quite small in terms of its angular size. People are surprised, but it's actually only about half a degree big, which means you can even co cover it up with just your thumb uh, of your outstretched hand. So the sun is smaller than you think it is. Uh, of course, uh, you don't want to be holding it, hand holding it like this. You'll want your camera on a solid tripod, of course. Uh, and if you have it, you'll want a remote control because that way you're not looking through the viewfinder of the camera, especially during those valuable moments when you're meant to be looking up and enjoying the eclipse. Um, and even better, an intervalometer if your DSLR has one. Uh, if you have an intervalometer, you know, the camera will just do its own thing and take pictures every whatever it is, every five seconds or every 10 seconds, and you don't have to be tending to it. Um, and one other thing, if your camera has it, and a lot of modern DSLRs will have it, is auto bracketing. So um, the camera will, every, every time you push the shutter button, instead of taking one photo, it'll take perhaps five photos with longer than and shorter than the designated exposure time. Of course, the theory being that at least one of those five pictures is going to be the exposure that you wanted. Um, I guess above all, you know, learn about your camera's capabilities uh, well ahead of time because you do not want to be flipping through the user manual during those precious minutes of totality. Um, and again, safety. Uh, do not ever aim your telephoto lens at the sun. Um, first of all, you can damage the sensor on your camera, but more importantly, you could if you look through the viewfinder, you can also damage your eyes, so don't do that. Now, they do make solar filters for telephoto lenses and for telescopes, whole other story. So we're talking about professional equipment there, but yeah, don't look at the sun through either binoculars, absolutely not, do not do that, or through a telephoto lens. And on a final note, those really amazing close-up pictures of the solar eclipse that you see in magazines, um, they were taken by people with lots of experience and probably, you know, more expensive gear than any of us have. So just take that into account. And I think especially if this is going to be your first time, the thing to do is don't worry so much about photography. Maybe just leave the camera aside and concentrate on experiencing this amazing spectacle and seeing it with your own eyes. And good luck on April 8th, 2024.